Yeah, good evening, Lester. More and more preparations underway. Then by time tomorrow night rolls around, we will start to feel the impacts in earnest across much of the Northeast. Let's talk about this and we'll lay out this menu of impacts that we'll have with this storm for you. First of all, the satellite picture shows this hybrid transition that you spoke of. You've already got a cloud canopy here that stretches uh, pretty much the entire eastern seaboard with the storm center currently about 730 miles to the south of New York City. Here's the track, this wild S shape that has all of us as meteorologists just kind of shaking our heads because we've never, never really seen this left hook. It'll bring it about 150 miles to the south of New York City uh, early, early Tuesday morning, and then there's the impacts. Let's lay them out for you here. We start with the storm surge. In Irene, right here at Battery Park, which is where I'm at tonight, we had three to six feet. We're expecting four to eight feet with this storm here and down the Jersey Shore as well. That will also be higher than what they dealt with during Irene. So plan on similar scenarios there. Then look at the rainfall. Huge areas of two inches plus, four inches plus, locally 10 inches in spots in parts of New Jersey and the Chesapeake Bay. And if you remember, the state of New Jersey was one of those heavily flooded back here uh, last year with Irene. Then snowfall, to add insult to injury, West Virginia, Ohio, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and parts of West Virginia, Lester, could actually get 50 inches of snow with this. You add all these ingredients together, and that means power outages, some which will last for weeks. Pennsylvania, New York, West Virginia, an eight hundred mile wide damage path with this on the 108th anniversary of the opening of the subway system in New York. We're hoping that in 48 hours, parts of it won't be underwater. Yeah. You got it, man.